Well, the beautiful thing about these guys is because they've had such long careers, there are so many different talking points. I'm going to pick out a few things that I think are very interesting. The first one I want to talk about is Josh Barnett's striking style. It's very unusual, and what you'll see him leaning over his front leg quite a lot. Now, there's a reason for this, and if you watch the short right hand that he throws in a second, it allows him to move himself into range and throw a very short punch, which effectively initiates the clinch. He's not really interested in standing trading, particularly not with Andrei Arlovsky. So I expect him to try and find ways into the clinch where he, he can strike without being seen to be striking or he can strike without being at risk of, of, uh, of being caught. And as you can see with Roy Nelson, we know Roy Nelson's a big puncher. So once he got him backed up to the fence, he was very cautious about how he moved in and attacked him up against the fence, using different tactics to cover that distance, whether it was a knee or a body kick or a combination of stuff. This is a beautiful combination here that he uses the uppercut with the knee. And then as soon as it's against the fence, this is where he really goes to work. And we see that in the Frank Mir fight particularly. As you can see, he's got Frank Mir backed up against the fence here. And this is beautiful work here. So he's got the underhook. And what you're going to see is you're going to put pressure down with the underhook, which is going to force Frank Mir's head down to a very vulnerable position. Now, Frank knows he's vulnerable here, which is why he's trying to guard this right hand. And, and Josh knows that this is his weapon. So he has to start adapting this attack. Now, Frank Mir is going to pull his head back. So Josh Barnett has to then adapt again. He has to find another way of making Frank, Frank vulnerable to that knee, which he does very well. And what he uses is this beautiful forearm under the chin. And you can see the, the discomfort on Frank Mir's face there. You can see it. He drives the forearm up into the chin. So then Frank feels the need to, to get out of the way and force his head back into a position where it's dangerous. So then the underhook comes in and the knee comes up. And that is not necessarily Frank Mir making a mistake. That's him being manipulated by the great clinch fighting of Josh Barnett. Arlovsky, like we said before, is the quintessential heavyweight athlete. He's very quick, he's got good fast hands, he's got great footwork, and he's good at moving in and out of range very quickly, so a lot of heavyweights can't keep up with him. And this is something he can use against Josh Barnett as well. If he can maintain that distance, he can really start to pick him off at range. Against Ben Rothwell, the right hand again is what gets the job done. Look at this, the overhand right comes, and then the short uppercut just to finish that combination. And, and the, the, the right hand uppercut is something we've seen quite consistently through his career. He sets it up really well against Roy Nelson here with the inside low kick, followed by a big right hand. There's the uppercut, Roy Nelson moves away. He steps on with a lazy left hook, but the right hand, bang, that gets the job done. A new addition to his game that I want to talk about is the oblique kick though, and this is the Jackson Wink toolbox that we're seeing now. Adapting it for a southpaw as well is very useful because Barnett does fight southpaw as well. He's comfortable there. But the oblique kick coming through and striking the top thigh of that front leg is really going to upset the progression of Josh Barnett, particularly because he puts a lot of weight on that front foot. And by using that against Bigfoot, it kept Bigfoot at a distance, which allowed him to throw that right hand. And you can just see him trying to pick his time here. Bigfoot was very, very cautious of stepping in because he kept getting caught with that oblique kick and he knows the power in that right hand. Now, if, if, he, if he just throws the right hand over and over again, that's going to be very predictable for Barnett, who's got a lot of experience against heavyweight fighters. Whereas if he can start throwing a few different techniques in to try and disguise that right hand, that's when it becomes extremely dangerous. Now with Barnett, it's all about the grappling. Like I said, he wants to close that distance. He wants to crowd Orlovsky up against the fence because once he's in that range, then he can start working a whole selection of techniques that he's got. He's got a variety of different takedowns that he'll use, lots of different trips and sweeps. But once he's on the ground, as you can see here against Mark Hunt, he's got a beautiful Kimura. Against Fedor's brother, uh, Alexander Melianenko, he's going to use an Americana. And, and it just is really a statement as to the, the, the depth of his ground game, the depth of his toolbox when it comes to the grappling range. Once he's in that top position, he's a very, very dangerous fighter. And the arm triangle, like I said, his last three submission wins have all been the arm triangle. As you can see here, the pressure on Brett Rogers there, cutting down, cutting off the air supply. Brett Rogers had no choice but to tap. And there are several different ways that he will find his way into this submission. You'll see in this one against Guelmino. Guelmino pushing on, uh, on the tricep to try and alleviate some of that forearm pressure. He falls straight into the arm triangle there. Against, uh, against Haritonov here, he slowly worked the ground and pound until Haritonov gave him his back. And then in this situation here, he is relying on Haritonov turning. You can see this hand's already starting to creep in now for the arm triangle. As Haritonov moves, he isolates that arm, he drops his head down to the side, and then as soon as he feels he's got his hands, pos hands positioned in a strong place, he's going to jump off to the side to really drive that pressure into the neck of his opponent and get the submission. That's the, that's the, the technique I'm looking out for in this fight because it's a very high higher percentage low risk technique. For Orlovsky, he has to keep the fight in the striking range. There's no doubt about that. I'm not saying he doesn't have submission skills because we know he has. He's got great sambo skills, great submissions on the floor. 
but he wants to keep the fight standing because that's his highest probability of winning. And this is going to be very useful. I want to talk about this underhook here. I talked about Barnett level changing, taking that front leg and then coming up to a body lock. This underhook here denies that entirely. And you can see this ramped posture in the sprawl as well. Puts a lot of pressure on the, on the posture of his opponent, breaks their posture and allows him to get that underhook and use it. And even if he's late with the underhook, you can see against Brendan Sharp here, he can shrug him off and, and still recover that position, get back to a striking range. And I'm not saying that if he does get taken down, he's gonna get stuck there, because we can see here, he gets taken down, a beautiful hip heist, straight back to his feet, and the pressure's immediately on his opponent. He's got a very well-rounded game. I'm not, I'm not denying that. He's got submission skills, he's got takedowns. We're gonna see some beautiful trips here. But even if he's on the floor, um, this, this is a beautiful technique here against Cruz, who pulled him into a, uh, into a half guard position. This punch on the ground, look at the power in that. To generate that kind of power from the bottom really shows how dangerous this guy is wherever the fight goes. I'm not saying he won't take the fight to the floor. I'm not saying he's not confident there, but his higher possibility of winning this fight is if he can get out and get space and land that right hand. If he finds himself in a position where he can't get out of the clinch, he can at least start to threaten that takedown to start opening up those doorways for him. It's, it's a very, very interesting matchup with two very well-rounded guys, very complementary striking skills and very complementary grappling skills, but there's no doubt how they win the fight and where they want to keep this fight in range.